Hi there, Linda Goodall here. A couple of my morning dog walking buddies are breast cancer survivors and they often wear their t-shirts with this motto. In this video, we'll take a look at one of the free cancer ribbon designs from my web shop and do some customizing and turn it into this. I'll be using Hatch Digitizer level for this. So here's the design. It's a PES file. It was originally digitized a few years ago before I switched to Hatch, so it's not a native EMB file. I've already opened it and we can see that it's not native because it has a grade D and it just has these two objects over here. In fact, <laughs> these aren't real hatch objects, they're just kind of globs of stitches. And you can see that they're stitches because of this indicator here. We have one glob for the light pink and another glob for the dark pink. If we're just going to add lettering to this, it's not a big deal. We just add our lettering and go on for it. But if we want to resize this or do anything more advanced, we'll probably want to do a little bit more work. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to select all, control A, and from the edit menu, I'll choose recognize stitches. Now Hatch has looked at the design and figured out which are objects and which you can't really figure out. And the ones it can't figure out are usually just run stitches. And they might be travel stitches, they might be part of the underlay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to only keep the parts of the design that are the top cover stitches. So I'll just select all of those and we'll hide them. Make sure I got them all. Hide selected. And there we have the remains. Select all and press delete. And then unhide all. Okay, there is the top stitching for designs. Now we need to do some work because we'll need to add back in the underlay, we'll need to add back in the travel stitches, and we need to do a little bit more work like that. Now if I zoom in down here, I'll turn off True View, we can see that we actually have two parts here. And it's that part and that part. We can also see that Hatch has turned these into objects that looks like they were made with the block tool. I can tell you, I did not make these with a block tool type of tool when I originally digitized that. It doesn't matter. What you need to know is that when Hatch does this conversion, it's converting it to what it thinks it should be. And even if this design had been created in Hatch and I created it using different tools, it would still probably look very similar to this. So I'll select this little piece, press H on the keyboard, and I'm just going to extend those pieces in there like that. And then I'll select both of these pieces. From the digitized toolbox, I'll select weld and now it's one piece. And Hatch has changed it to a freehand closed shape. I'll zoom out, press zero on the keyboard. And if I select some of these objects and press H, you can see that they have quite a few points on them. In fact, there's something weird going on down there. So let's zoom in on that. Press H and I'll just drag a selection around that and fix that like that and zero out. So what Hatch has to do is it looks at the stitches and it tries to draw an outline around them. You might want to clean it up by selecting all going to the Edit Objects toolbox and choosing Smooth Shapes. And sometimes that can help. Now if we zoom in on here, you can see these peculiar looking shapes. I'll select them this way. This is what I call planking. And I did this in the original design because this these stitches are going this way and they stitch over these two pieces. And when stitches bite into those other ones. They can pull those stitches back and expose fabric. So I'll put something like that under there and it will sort of expose stitches instead of naked fabric. I can see that we need to do a little fixing here. So I'm going to press H on the keyboard and I'm just going to move these in here a bit more. Same with this one. Press H, adjust that in there like that. Press zero, zoom out. This design, I'll select all, is about 90 millimeters tall. Let's make it 125 millimeters. Because we've turned these into hatch objects, we can easily do that. So select all and enter 125. I'll press zero. In fact, if we look down here on the status bar, we've now turned this into a grade A and we get a little heart. So we, now we've created a real hatch design 
from a PES file. Now let's add back in our underlay. I'll select all, deselect those little planking bits by holding down the control key, and I'll just add some to Tommy and an edge run. Let's go to the fill tab, and I think I'm going to set the length to 4.5, and I'll set the spacing to 0.42, and press enter. You can see these dotted lines mean that I have travel stitches. And we actually have two colors here, so this is actually a darker color and the rest are this lighter color. So let's reconnect our travel. So I'm going to zoom in and let's see what we have going on here. So we have this one, then this one, and then it's jumping over to there. And actually what I could do is I could select all of these Go to the Stitching tab and turn off Trims. And now it's connecting these pieces. But I can also manually connect them. So I'll select this piece so I know where I'm going to connect from. Go to the Digitize Toolbox. Select Digitize Open Shape. And I'll just draw a line like that. It's a run stitch. And I'll move that up to where it's in between those two objects and then we'll select all, press J on the keyboard, and that reconnects everything. Now I want to put an outline around this. The original design had a running stitch outline because it was fairly small. This is a bigger design. We're going to, need to put a satin stitch border on this. A satin stitch border is a little more forgiving, so it's going to work better on more fabrics without gapping. And you might think we could use the Create Outlines and Offsets tool, but we really can't. What I really want for the outline is for it to come around like this, and then cross over and come around back like that. I could use the Create Outlines on this one. So I'm going to turn off Tree View. I'm going to press S on the keyboard, and now we can see the outlines of our shape. This is going to make it easy for us to just trace over this. So select the Digitize Open Shape tool. We want to use a satin. And now all I have to do is just trace on that outline. So I'm using right mouse clicks for curves, a left for a point, press enter, and then we'll start over here, and we'll go around this way. Now you don't have to be exactly perfect, that's the nice thing about a satin stitch outline, we just have to be close, and if we don't get it quite right we can come back and edit it with the reshape tool. And we're probably going to have to do this because I'm doing this pretty fast. So I'll select it, press H, and we can see where we need to tweak it up here. And when you're happy with everything, we'll turn back on Tree View. And I see that I need to adjust that, so I'm going to zoom in here. Select that, press H on the keyboard, pull it back just a tiny bit, press 0, and I want to make these two the dark color. So our ribbon is looking pretty good here. Let's turn off Tree View and we'll check for trims and jumps. I'm going to need to go to the Colors tab. I'll hide this color, hide selected, and it looks like we're good there. So I'm going to now hide unselected. We have a trim there and we have a trim there. And the problem is that we have this piece sewing, then it jumps down here to sew this one, and then it goes over here to sew that one. Now one way we might fix that is to select both of these and choose branching. And I think we fixed it. We'll unhide all. Let's go to our design information tab. And we have two trims. Good. Turn that on. Here's our design. Now we need to do the cutting part, but what I like to do now is because this is a pretty good looking design right here, I might want to save this one and then do a Save As to do my cutting on. So let's do Save As. And I'll just add Split to this. So the next step is to add our lettering. And you might add Survivor, you might add Hope, you might add whatever their name is. So we'll go to the Lettering and Monogramming Toolbox. I'll choose Lettering, and I'm going to type Survivor. Set the height to 15 millimeters, and I'm going to use the Gabriola font. And 
The next step is to decide where you want to position it. So I think about there looks good. Now I'm going to draw out some ruler lines. And this is where I'm going to cut my shape. Now I'm going to use the knife tool to do this. But before I do that, I need to unbranch this object because you can't cut through a branched object. So I'm going to select it, press Control K. Unbranching is break apart, by the way, and you can find that in the toolboxes. Make sure nothing is selected. Click on my knife tool. And then I'm just going to click up here. And I'm just going to click through the parts that I want to cut. So don't click through your lettering. I'm just using those guidelines. Hatch has cut my pieces. I'm going to lock that one. And then I'll just drag a selection across here and delete that. We're getting close. Now we need to add some bars across here. I'll unlock that. Shift K. I think I want to move it over just a little bit more this way. Maybe there. Go to the Digitize Toolbox, select Digitize Open Shape, and I'm just going to make a line across here. And I think I want that a little bolder. I'll set that at 3. Maybe not quite that wide, maybe 2.5. And we want that the dark pink. And I want to also have one down here and to make sure it's the same size in the same place, I'm going to go to the Create Layouts Toolbox and choose Mirror Copy Vertical and just do that. Now remember earlier, we had to do some cleanup to reconnect parts. We have cut up our design and when you use the knife tool, it can have some somewhat destructive effects on the rest of your design. It's going to break up your pathing and you're not going to be sequenced very well anymore. It can disrupt your underlay and it can disrupt your stitch angles. So you're going to have to do a little bit more work to clean up your design and get it ready to sew. We've already covered those steps in the first process. In the interest of time for this video, we're not going to go through that process. You should know how to do it. To see what it should like when it's done, we'll go over to this one and we'll click the Stitch Player button and just watch it sew. Now what I've done here is I've grouped these pieces to sew together and then I've grouped these pieces to sew together and I've connected across here to make those pieces not have a jump. And I've also resequenced these border pieces so these parts sew together and then these parts come down here and sew together. I've also made the lettering a different color. The nice thing about that is that even if I only have this as a stitch file and you get this only as a stitch file, you could delete this part and put your own name in there. Now remember, these cancer ribbons come in a variety of colors. I'm just doing it in pink because it's October and it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. There is a two color ribbon also available for download. This one was done for my brother when he was diagnosed with oral cancer a few years ago. So if you have software, you don't always have to start from scratch. You can take another design and work with it. But do remember, if you've used another person's design, they still own the design, even if you've done all this extra work to it. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and please make a comment. It helps me decide what videos to make.